Uh, let's start. You know, a lot of the sessions about uh, Kubernetes and uh, databases and things. Um, I'll talk about things that are a little bit in the lower level, uh, which you all use, and that is uh, storage uh, and a method of uh, how to use the storage. Uh, so that's, um, I guess, a very cool uh, picture of me. Uh, when I'm not uh, spending my time with the uh, databases or uh, performance of storage, I'm usually climbing mountains. Um, been in plenty of startups, uh, Grimplum, Scale.io, been in Red Hat as well, and now I'm with a company called uh, Lightbits. So, um, anyone here knows what is NVMe over TCP? Wow. One dude. All right, beer on me and, uh, tonight. Um, so I guess, are you using NVMe over TCP? Ah, all right, that's way too much to, uh, to ask. So uh, I'm gonna go through NVMe over TCP, uh, why do we need it, um, and then some uh, performance benchmarks I did with, the, um, uh, with Postgres uh, on uh, Kubernetes, on uh, OpenShift actually. Um, in AWS, uh, although this is NVMe over TCP or what we're gonna talk about, of course, is not just for the uh, cloud. Um, so 12 uh, years ago, um, um, NVMe came to the world, if you wanna kind of uh, uh, say that. Um, it's basically a different method, a better method to access uh, flash devices, PCIe uh, SSDs. Um, so I want to know how much uh, 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 people uh, remember or uh, you know, go deep down into servers. Used to have SATA and SAS. NVMe came in, basically create a, 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 a different uh, queuing mechanism, different sets of command to interact with uh, these uh, uh, flash-based uh, PCI devices. Um, five years uh, later, someone, well, many people, a few people came with the idea to uh, actually try to access uh, these uh, fast devices, fast storage devices, NVMe SSDs, over network. And that's where NVMe over fabric basically um, kind of uh, came, in, uh, came into life. Um, and there were um, um, basically throughout the first few years, two initials uh, uh, approaches to that. Um, you could use a, a, a fiber channel, so NVMe over FC. Or you could do a RDMA, which is a, a remote direct memory access, either InfiniBand, uh, or, um, ROC, which is uh, called the Rocky, and the IRAP. So um, these are different technologies to access NVMe over fabric. So a client or a server can access a storage remotely on a different server through some sort of a, a fabric. Um, in uh, uh, 2018, um, there was another layer or another uh, protocol uh, and spec that was added, and that is NVMe over uh, TCP. Also in 2019, surprisingly, uh, I was actually not working in a light bit uh, back then, uh, but a, a, a taller, younger, and much smarter version of another guy named Sagi uh, wrote the uh, spec and first uh, kernel module for NVMe over, uh, over TCP. And uh, Lightbits, uh, um, back then as a startup, basically created the first uh, uh, storage uh, solution uh, that will use NVMe over TCP. You have NVMe TCP, in the Linux uh, kernel since version uh, 4.10, which means in most of the uh, enterprise Linux versions that you use, whether it's RHEL or Ubuntu or Soze, it's already in. You don't need to worry about uh, having uh, any kind of uh, 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 special drivers uh, installed. The same thing will be for any, uh, if, you, if you're using any kind of a thin oper uh, Linux operating system to run Kubernetes uh, uh, on top, Again, it's uh, all going uh, to be inside. Um, today, so yeah, I'm from Lightbits. Lightbits, of course, uh, our storage, uh, our software-defined storage solution uses NVMe over TCP. But throughout the last uh, uh, three years, um, we actually saw 
all the major uh, um, uh, storage uh, vendors uh, all starting to move into using NVMe over TCP because of the, uh, mainly because of the performance advantage it can, uh, it can provide. It really depends whether that storage solution was uh, initially written uh, for NVMe over TCP or not, but it does, uh, uh, brings a lot of uh, advantage. So I'm not good. This is, uh, you know, uh, geek level number uh, uh, three in here. I'm not going to go too much into how uh, everything is uh, basically working in, in, in the stack, because that will take uh, two hours. But like a, a lot of things, you have a physical layer, your fabric. Um, above, above that, your uh, transport, which is, uh, uh, you know, TCP in all, the, uh, in all the cases that I spoke about, whether it's NVMe of TCP or uh, others. And um, um, other layers are addressing uh, the encapsulation of the packets, uh, how things are being sent, queuing, and uh, uh, other things like that. Just this is kind of a, a, re, a, a kind of a recap in terms of uh, the transport. If we're using PCIe Express for NVMe, which is meaning we have an SSD device connected directly to our server, um, we're going to address directly the memory. Um, if we are using something like a remote uh, DMA, uh, we're going basically going to address the memory and some sort of a messaging uh, mechanism to communicate because it's either local or remote. And when we use something like a, uh, a NVMe over uh, a NVMe over FC or NVMe over TCP, um, everything is done via, uh, via messages, and it, because everything is basically remote from uh, your uh, client. Just to go, uh, uh, just to uh, explain, um, at the end of the day, what your server or operating system sees is basically a regular NVMe device, the uh, Linux operating system has, uh, I guess, uh, in a very simple way, no idea that the NVMe or the slash dev NVM, something that uh, it is using, is actually a remote uh, device and not a physical device that is uh, connected uh, into the server. Um, so why we need a, 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 you know, NVMe over TCP or why it was actually uh, um, uh, started? Um, so NVMe direct attach for PCI SSD device is awesome. It's a very good way to communicate with the uh, uh, flash-based uh, devices, but it's limited because it's only locally to your server, node, instance, whatever you want to call it. You cannot reach, uh, you cannot reach it uh, remotely. Um, RDMA started the journey of uh, approaching things uh, uh, over the network. Uh, and uh, uh, as well as a uh, NVMe over uh, uh, FC, but um, there it's not that they are limited. It's just that you will you will need specialized network cards. Uh, you will need uh, in some cases uh, specialized uh, switches, um, and uh, and so you are basically uh, uh, it's not something that you can easily move from either one location to another, one data center to another, or even between a, a cloud providers. There's a lot of hardware backend that needs to be done in order to, uh, to run it. And that's where uh, um, uh, NVMe over TCP uh, came in. Basically, the whole uh, concept and idea behind this was you have TCP anywhere in the world, in any database, whether it's the cloud or your private cloud, and so why not use that infrastructure, which is already there, to uh, transfer basically uh, data or storage, handle storage uh, to, uh, uh, to your clients or to your, uh, to your uh, workloads. Um, a few points about uh, uh, NVMe over TCP, as I just uh, uh, mentioned. Anywhere you have TCP, you can use it. Um, also, I did mention, you know, um, there's uh, other vendors uh, besides the uh, light bits that are uh, handling NVMe over TCP uh, storage uh, today. Um, if you are looking into um, uh, how instances are built in, in, in the cloud, especially in the major uh, big uh, three, usually most of the instances have higher network bandwidth than actually 
uh, a storage bandwidth that the uh, cloud provider is, uh, is allowing. And that is uh, a, an advantage uh, because uh, you are paying for the instance anyhow, but with NVMe over TCP, you actually have uh, the method to achieve a, a bigger or a higher bandwidth. Um, all right, so let's talk about what I did in order to do some performance uh, comparison. Um, and actually, I was asked for, uh, to, to talk here about maybe a week ago, uh, so I had to do things very, uh, uh, very uh, quickly. Um, and so um, I'll actually start from uh, the bottom. Um, Sherlock is a, is a performance benchmark tool that I wrote while I was uh, still in uh, Red Hat. It's uh, a very uh, simple approach to test a storage with uh, all sorts of uh, databases, uh, storage in uh, Kubernetes. So uh, any storage that you want to use in uh, Kubernetes um, has a uh, um, uh, code for uh, MySQL, Postgres, uh, Mongo, and SQL Server. Uh, and uh, um, because that's what I, uh, I had back then in, uh, in uh, Red Hat. Um, and it's, it's using uh, either uh, Sysbench for uh, MySQL and uh, Postgres. You can do a PGBench for Postgres. You can do uh, YCSB for uh, MongoDB and HammerDB for uh, uh, SQL Server. So because I did not have a lot of time, I started with uh, uh, Sherlock. I started with the Sysbench because it's, uh, it works very nice with uh, Postgres. Um, Kubernetes, why? Well, because it's a KubeCon, uh, and uh, I've used the uh, uh, OpenShift. And, and Postgres is actually my uh, favorite uh, uh, open source uh, database, so that why, that's why uh, Postgres uh, uh, was chosen. So let's see how all of this is uh, uh, looking. And as I, as I uh, said, I've done this on, on AWS. Um, on the right side, um, you basically have three instances, uh, uh, very actually, uh, uh, from Lightbit's perspective, uh, small instances that uh, uh, the uniqueness for them, uh, they are in AWS, they are called Instance Store. They have uh, direct attach NVMe devices uh, to them. So basically, Lightbit's run on these three uh, instances and in a very um, um, short description of uh, Lightbit's, because it's software-defined storage, there's nothing special about these instances. Uh, they are uh, running, a, I think, a RHEL 8, and uh, um, it's just a bunch of RPMs that we installed. We, de we uh, definitely consume uh, all the resources on these instances in terms of uh, network and CPU, so you don't run anything uh, on these uh, instances. And, um, um, and, and we basically, throughout our software, uh, create a, a, a logical, a large logical uh, entity that includes all the uh, attached NVMe devices uh, in, in those instances. Uh, in, for these uh, type of instances, there's uh, two NVMe devices attached to uh, each of them. Um, again, this is all over uh, TCP, so there's no any kind of a special magic or anything like that. All I did was I installed the OpenShift cluster on AWS, and then I uh, installed a, a through the Lightbits marketplace, uh, the Lightbits cluster into the same uh, uh, VPC. So it's all sitting nice on the same VPC, on the same private uh, uh, subnet. And now all I need is uh, some, uh, a method, which is a Sherlock to deploy whatever uh, databases I wanted uh, uh, to test with the, uh, with the performance. Um, so in each, uh, uh, I had a, um, only, I think only a single master and I think only a single uh, uh, worker. Again, the worker uh, also not a, a very uh, uh, big one, um, r 6 i and 8X. And uh, basically, uh, while this is uh, uh, showing uh, two Postgres, uh, I think I ended up with uh, three Postgres pods um, in, uh, in each uh, uh, instance. And you had, for each of these Postgres pods, you have another uh, pod, a matching pod from Sherlock that runs uh, Sysbench, or if it's something else, a, a different uh, a workload. And there's a tiny uh, a pod that runs on each of these uh, uh, 
uh, workers or on, on this single worker that also also measure uh, uh, performance using uh, uh, MPSTAT, IOSTAT, VMSTAT, uh, and uh, things like that. This is basically how it uh, uh, looks. Now, um, so this is basically, uh, I forgot to mention, actually, let me go back. Um, what I uh, wanted to compare this is basically in AWS, again, I didn't have a lot of time, is with the highest available storage that AWS uh, provide, which is IO2 Block Express. This is basically the uh, high-end storage. Uh, when you need a lot of IOPS, uh, you get you know, to the IO2, and then IO2 Block Express, can, you can also consume it also with the specific uh, uh, instances in AWS. And, um, and that's basically what I've uh, 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 compared this to. So um, this, there's a lot of uh, numbers in here. I've started to play with basically, uh, as I said, these three databases running on a single worker node, and uh, uh, each of them has a dedicated uh, uh, sysbench uh, pod. And I started to play with the number of threads that is uh, um, uh, that you know I was basically stressing. Uh, the Postgres uh, uh, databases. And what you're seeing is basically uh, average of um, six iteration of 30 minutes and totaling all the uh, transaction that Sysbench was able to uh, uh, achieve in a, a 30 minutes uh, a time. And you can see the difference between, um, um, you know, uh, the gap between uh, Lightbits and uh, IO2 uh, Block Express. This is not um, me trying to say IO2 Block Express is not an awesome technology. It's a, it's an, it is an awesome uh, technology. It's just that uh, in the cloud, what you can achieve with a, a direct attack, uh, with a native uh, provider cloud storage is limited. And with network, you can achieve uh, a, a lot more. Just to... Um, conclude this, oh, but, so by the way, on, on the right side, one thing to uh, always remember, um, if you're playing with uh, Sherlock, there's a lot of, uh, there's instructions on the, uh, on the Git repo, but everything that uh, Sherlock does meant to test storage, not CPU and not uh, memory, which is why deliberately there's a very low cache uh, ratio for all these uh, pods in order to force all IOs that Postgres is doing or any database that you are uh, testing uh, to go th uh, directly or force it to go to the storage layer. Otherwise, uh, in, in real life scenarios, you actually want your Postgres to have more uh, caching, uh, but this is uh, how you measure storage in uh, databases. This is the cases where someone is running a BigQuery or you have 100 people instead of 10 that are suddenly uh, uh, sending uh, queries to a database, and there's a lot more of IO fetching into the storage because there's not, there's not enough caching. So this method, you basically uh, force, uh, uh, with a very low cache in the pods, you basically force things to go directly to uh, the storage. And so just one last thing, um, just to, it, it's a little bit of a confusing uh, uh, slide, um, but these are the uh, uh, performance uh, number and actually cost numbers uh, of when I done uh, when I uh, ran these uh, tests. So what you're seeing on the blue is basically the uh, transactions, uh, uh, the average of the transaction per uh, 30, uh, uh, 30 minutes. And then uh, the red is basically how much it will cost you uh, to run this on AWS. Now this will be, can be completely different in uh, other clouds. And again, NVMe over TCP is not cloud specific. Uh, we started actually, Lightbit started uh, as a, an on-prem solution and moved it uh, and added uh, uh, the cloud as well. Um, but you know, it's something to think about. You're running databases, I'm sure most of you are. Um, once you get to a certain threshold when uh, the, you know, the low level SSDs are, are not a good fit, um, you wanna try and look into NVMe over TCP, not only can boost your performance, but it can also uh, save you money. And I also have that thing for the feedback and everything. And if you have any questions,
Anybody have questions? Hi, um, hey. thank you for that. Um, I'm, more, I'm wondering about the, uh, like the other two, are, are like RDMA and Fiber Channel, are those you know, available like light bits in the cloud? And if they are, like, what does the performance look like? So again, um, I took this example. I used uh, AWS just because I had access and it was fast to do. Um, so IRAP is almost, I, no, not a lot of people are uh, using it. Uh, NVMe over, uh, uh, over fiber channel, um, you know, it's there. I don't think it's, a, it's very uh, uh, successful. Um, and RDMA, I think you might be able to find some very specific uh, uh, cases. Uh, for example, um, if you are going with, you know, we're going outside of the open source world here, but if you're doing something like Exadata storage in, in uh, Oracle Cloud, that is with the RDMA, that's basically how Exadata is, uh, uh, is working. Performance-wise, um, I'll be honest, um, there is um, a, a, a slight better performance if you're going to start to use something like a, a, a Rocky, for example. Um, but the penalty is that you're going to need to have that specialized uh, uh, hardware in order to use it. Um. For the for your instances on AWS, right? You you took those. Uh, I can't remember those. R six I N eighty. Yes, and you put light bits on there, right? To get that on the other instances. Oh yeah, yeah. I for I. Yes, yes. Yes. And you put light bits on there to enable that NVMe over TCP. Yeah. Right. So in an on-premise solution, um, you know, let's say you had like a Dell Unity or a NetApp device. And those, you mentioned earlier that a lot of those already support TCP, and, yeah. NVMe, NVMe yeah. over TCP, or um, is that something that you need to like bring in and, and put onto, I mean, if you have other hardware, just regular commodity hardware you can do? No, so that's, that's the whole concept is that it's software only. So on the light bits uh, uh, side, what you saw here, um, there is really nothing special that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of special things that are running over there. Uh, by the way, including, uh, we use etcd on all these instances uh, for a lot of things, but um, not in the data path, but uh, we use them. But um, the, the, the idea is that um, the driver, is you're not going to need any special driver because it's already part of the Linux uh, kernel. Of course, in that slide, what is missing is CSI. We have uh, CSI drivers. Um, and uh, you know whether it's a, a Dell solution that uses NVMe over TCP, you're, you're still going to need to use their CSI driver. So NVMe over TCP will just be the transport of how you're going to access with a CSI the storage. Yes, yeah, so cost is like uh, per DB or per data transactions. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, the cost is like, I misunderstood maybe, like it's a per DB per instance, or it's like a per transaction, uh, that cost you are showing in the slide. Per DB? Um, you mean like the connection to the storage itself? R right. Connection to the storage itself is irrelevant to the application or the database. The queuing mechanism, the default queuing mechanism will basically create a queue per core in your, uh, uh, in your server, whether it's a physical server or an instance uh, uh, in the cloud. It is, has nothing to do with you know, who, whomever is using NVMe over TCP. Um, and you can play with uh, the queuing mechanism uh, in, if you uh, uh, load the uh, NVMe over TCP driver uh, with a, a different uh, settings. But the default settings basically just creates a single, uh, 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 it creates a queue per, uh, uh, per core. Yeah, thanks, Sergey. And I was going to ask about the CSI driver, but you already uh, replied. So I was wondering, uh, I, I actually have two questions. One, if you support volumes and snapshots, and the second one is, uh, what combinations can we 
uh, used to, for, for example, for ride, uh, right? If we can create ride arrays uh, for, and with uh, you know the underlying storage, so especially for premise uh, installations, I'm thinking. Yeah. So um, for NVMe again, NVMe over TCP is just a, the the transport layer in the light bits. If you're running light bits uh, on-prem, uh, you can actually have uh, us uh, doing erasure coding at the instance uh, level. Um, and, uh, and so you have a protection, not only in a number of replicas, which in light bits you can actually choose whether you have one, two, or three replicas for every volume. It's, it's really up to you. Um, and, and then you can add another erasure coding level at the node level to do a protection from a failure of a, a, of a device. Um, it re so it really depends on the other uh, uh, solutions. And I forgot your first question. Snapshot, in a, again, NVMe over TCP is just a transport, light bits, of course, everything in light bits is thin provision. We have snapshot, clones, all of these things are, are, are part of a, our, our software. Hi, um, I was just curious, how does NVMe over TCP compare with uh, iSCSI? In terms of uh, performance? Yeah. Uh, between 10 to 20 times faster. Okay. If, if not more. I, I'm being, I'm being uh, honest and, uh, you know, try not to, yeah. But it's, it's not. And, 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 to, and to be fair, you know, iSCSI is a protocol that exists many years. Uh, it was written for a very specific type of uh, storage, uh, which is not very fast when it was written to. So things just evolve. Do you see that uh, CXL will be changing anything, even though it does require s specialized hardware? I mean, we. PCIe over, you know, as a network, maybe more performant? Definitely, um, um, there's going to be, uh, and has been in a, a few, for a few years, method of trying to run PCI networks, if you want to uh, call it. At the end of, you know, like I showed in here, we had, you know, RDMA, which was uh, uh, mainly with InfiniBand, and we had uh, IRAP, and we had uh, Rocky. They did not become a big uh, success because it was specialized uh, hardware. And now, in the last, you know, few years, when people are moving a lot of stuff to the cloud, or at least want to have the ability to move back and forth, you start to look at, uh, at uh, uh, the components of your infrastructure to be very common. Um, otherwise, you're starting to limit yourself. That's about all we have time for questions for. Thank you, Sagi. Thank you.